Mysterious Traveller, The Man Who Vanished, July 06, 1948, Radio Script. Train Interior, Traveller, this is the Mysterious Traveller, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and terrifying. I hope you enjoy the trip. It, it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back. Get a good grip of your ner- on your nerves. Be comfortable. If you can, as you hear the story, I call a man who vanished. Train whistle. Train rumbles down track. Traveller, our story begins in a small white walled hospital room. Charles Aldroy, a man of 45, has just awakened. He looks about him in puzzlement. Then their memory returns to him. He begins to call out frank- frankly. Charles, agitated, doctor, doctor, nurse, where are you? I must speak to the doctor. The room door opens, attendant, yes, Mr. Woodway, what is it? Charles, are you the doctor? Attendant, no, sir. Only attendant, you want to speak to Dr. Harvey? Charles, yes, I must, I must, it's a matter of life and death. Attendant, okay, Mr. Woodway, okay. Miss Dr. Harvey, 402, please. It's coming now, sir. Charles, thank you. Tell me, what day is this? Is it fr- is it Friday? Isn't it? It must be Friday. Ten sure, it's Friday. Doorway. Here's Dr. Harvey now. Tenant exits and the room door closes. Doctor, oh, good morning, Mr. Doorway. You wanted to speak to me? Charles, yes, Doctor. But tell me quickly, what time is it? Doctor, it's just uh, ten minutes past ten, Mr. Doorway. Charles. Oh, thank heavens, my dear brother John isn't dead. It's still time to save him. Doctor, your brother? Charles, yes, doctor. <coughs> when I woke up, I didn't know how long it was since I brought to you. I was all drugged into silence. Don't suppose they told you about John? Doctor, I'm afraid they didn't. Charles, well, then I'll tell you. I'll make you believe me. John's safe for several hours yet. So I tell you the whole story. Sorry, they wouldn't give me a chance to tell. So yes, so go, go right ahead, Miss Aldway. Just sit here and make myself comfortable, Charles. Well, I'll try to tell it calmly, Doctor. Don't want you to think I'm hysterical. First of all, you have to understand that my brother John is a freak of nature. Doctor, a freak, Charles. Yes, he's perfectly healthy and highly intelligent. He was born without any natural colouring at all. His eyes are pink, his skin is chalk white, his hair is like bleached flax, his eyebrows are lashes, but perfectly, correctly invisible. So yes, the most unusual condition. It happens once in a while. It's called albinism. Charles, well, it's a hideous condition. An intelligent, sensitive man, John's mildwood, was a torture for him. Until our father took us both out of school and had us tutored to spare John the misery being considered a freak of nature by the other children. Dot, yes, I understand, Mr. Oldway. Please go on. Charles, well, we grew up. John's chief interest was science. So I, so I studied it. Two, our father, complete laboratory built in our home. Our deaths would continue to live there together, working experimental research. Don't know long what lines, Miss Woodway. Charles, well, our efforts were centred on discovering a cure for John's condition. To achieve that, he worked carefully for years. But he always failed. My brother's raid, honorably calm but inwardly, began to sprue. Then one evening came into my room. John, old Charles. Charles, yes, John. Finished in the lab. John, in a way, Charles. I have something to show you, Charles. Show me. You mean you found a cure? John, not exactly. Look at this what the wire cage. Seven a white rat are having it. Charles, white rat? Good heavens. John this morning? That was an ordinary white rat. And look, look at it. Now look at it. Charles, it's like a rat made of glass. It's almost transparent. John, it is transparent. You can see through completely through it. Charles, John, this is amazing. John. This is what I've been working on all the, on these last months, Charles. 
in developing a serum in alter living tissues to make them transparent. Charles, I would not have believed it possible. John, I don't see why not. Nature does it all the time. She makes jellyfish that are quite transparent. Charles, well, yes, of course. I didn't think. John, but this is only the first step. My next step is to develop a serum further to make living tissue disinvisible. Charles invisible? John, you look skeptical, my dear Charles. But look at this rat. He's half, he's half invisible already. In a dim light, he vanished. Charles, yes, that's, that's true, but... John, <laughs> a basic principle is perfectly natural. Charles, it's only a matter of refrying it. Then, Charles, well, take a freak like myself, that's so colourless, you already well started towards invisibility. Find out what he's like to come completely unseen. Some day, Charles, are going to be to have a real surprise for you. Charles, that was the first induction to John's experiments. After that, for many weeks, he worked in secret. That morning, he called me into his laboratory and laboratory and showed me the cage that seemed to be empty. There was something scurrying about it, a rat, a visible rat. The touch it was warm and furry, filled with life, but on its the eye. If the light was not too bright, it was nothing. John, well, Charles, convinced now? Charles, yes, yes, convinced you have succeeded, John. John, not quite. I haven't made myself invisible yet. Charles, why? <coughs> are you trying, or, or to, why, why are you not going, not going to try your serum on yourself? John, of course I am. Listen, Charles, always I've been considered a freak. Now I'm going to turn the tables. I mingle with people and I laugh at them. I be their superior, able to come and go without their knowledge, able to control their very destinies if I wish. Charles John, that's a madness. John, on the contrary, a scientific fact. You see, because you're going to help me. Charles, no. John, you fools. You let me down. You're your own brother. Charles, well. Of course, John. Oh, John, I knew I'd get you your help. Here's a hypodermic for the serum. All I want you to do is inject it into my arm. <laughs> and watch the results. Charles, I tried to refuse, but John wouldn't let me. At last I gave in and injected the colour serum into his veins. First nothing happened. And he waited to remove his garments, but for Charles, the serum would only affect his living tissues. Finally, a change came. Skin became paler and paler. Till so suddenly realised I was looking, not looking at, not realised I was not look at, looking not at it, but through it. After that, the change was rapid. But he seemed to fade away before my eyes into nothingness. John, well, Charles, what do you say now? Charles, but John, this frightens me. John, why should it? I feel fine. In fact, I feel so good. I'm going to take a little jaunt downtown. You see how the world looks? A man who's invisible. Charles, oh no, you mustn't. John, and why not, Charles? Charles, why? You, are, you aren't really ready for it yet. There may be after effects, reactions. You aren't prepared for. John, oh, nonsense. There's only one thing to be careful. Of the tissues must return to normal in 24 hours. The neutralizer serum is in injected before then. Or death occurs, otherwise it's perfectly safe. So I insist, Charles, that, that what that I'm going? A little visible sightseeing to our tonight. You're going to conduct me. Charles, again I tried to say no, but John was assistant. At last I gave in. He is always a stronger the will. He took the car and I drove downtown. He sat beside me and seen him as a very air laughing to himself. <laughs> Charles, John, John, it's, let's turn back now. John, turn back? I should say it's not. Drive them to Main Street, park around the corner in the Watson jewelry store. A one where old schoolboy companion Harry Watson works for his father. Charles, why? Well, why, John? John, because I'm going to try an interesting experiment. That's why. 
Giles, John was in a strange mood, I obeyed his orders with misgivings. Parked the car as he directed, we got out and stood on the sidewalk. The evening crowds drifting past us, completely aware that John was of John at my side. So John spoke. John, now is the time, Charles. Nobody's in the store but Henry Watson himself. Come on, we're going in. in. I'll tell you to show you some stopwatches, keep him occupied. And don't worry about me. Charles, nervous. Well, what are you going to do? John, never mind. Just do as I say. Whatever happens, pretend not to notice. Come on, open the door. Door, door, door opens. And traffic, see traffic out the door, closes behind. Watson, slightly off. Oh, hello, Charles. Can I help you? Charles, well, I'd like to look at your stopwatch, Harry. Watson, stopwatch, of course. Go over here. Display case stays open. Watch his hand on the agreement. Watson, there's a beauty. Charles, this Swiss chronograph is timed to one hundredth of a second, Charles. I'm afraid it's to be too expensive. Watson, oh, well, perhaps you'd like this one. The American made and What was that? Charles, what was what? Watson, I heard a noise at the back of the store. Charles, I didn't hear anything. Watson, there he is again. Is someone back there? Charles, but where? There isn't. Can't be. There's nothing in sight. Wasn't well, just the same. I think there's someone back there. Quickly moving off. Excuse me. I'm putting uh, away some valuable diamonds when he came in. I got to see about them. Charles, he hurried back into the federal area of the store. Held out my breath. We should run up into John. I heard Watson cry out. Watson, I've got you, you thief. Ah, uh -huh, I've not got you. You're not going away. What are you doing? Help, Charles, help me. Help, runts. During this scuffle, Watson stabbed. By the body, stumped to the floor. Charles, John, John, what happened? John, come on, on quickly. We have to get out of here. Charles, well, what happened? John, the fool bumped into the smith's shadow. He was so excited, he didn't even realise. He didn't, couldn't see me. I used a paper knife. I picked up, it caught him a little, I taught him a little lesson. Charles? What? He's not dead? John, come on, you've got to get out of here. Someone may have heard him. Charles, we got to the, out of the store into the car. I drove home. John refused to answer any of my frantic questions. We reached the house. He hurried me into the laboratory. Charles, give me a neutralizer. I may, I, I'll be may, me visible, visible again, Charles. Charles, but John. John, no questions. Here we are. Here's a herbidemic. Herbidemic. You've got to inject it here. Here's the mark for the previous injection. Now go ahead. Charles had pressed the plunger. The drug flowed in his blood. For a moment, nothing happened. Then, like a man materializing out of nothingness, he grew visible. A misty figure that looked, took on the solidarity till it was a man. John gave a little brass weariness. Charles and pushed me out, and he and pushed me out of the room. John, oh, go on, Charles. You go to get to bed. I need some sleep. This stuff seems to drain away my energy. We're talking in the morning. Pleasant dreams. Charles, the next morning I was having breakfast when John finally appeared. John, good morning, Charles. Sleep well. Charles, John, the newspaper. John, look anything in it? Charles, yes. There's something in it. Look at the headlines. John, let me, let's see. They're going to do a kill. Strange reverie. Fifty thousand dollars of diamonds missing. Charles, you killed Harry last night. John. Yes, so it seems. Four. Pour me some coffee, will you? Charles, John. I don't understand you. You killed a man. You act as if you mounted to the moment is swatting a fly. John, well done. Does it? Charles, of course it doesn't. John, John, I couldn't feel the that way about it. So we had small, when we were small boys. You remember that Harry Watson, one of my chief tormentors? Charles, yes, but? John, I always planned to pay him back. Last night I decided to play a little joke on him. Charles, murder is hardly a joke. John, I only didn't intend to kill the fool. I just meant to get, make away one or two of his father's big diamonds. Of Harry had a chance to explain the disappearance. We're going to mail them back. Charles, yes, the diamonds, the paper says, are $50,000 worth of missing. John L. Probably, was adoration. However, 
Put your hands into the, your left coat shirt pocket, Charles. Charles reaches into his pocket. What? Why a dozen loose diamonds here? John, yes, I put them in there last night. I couldn't very well carry them myself. Charles, you mustn't send you must send them back at once. John Well, I'm afraid that might involve us uh, uh, somehow. Oh no, we have to keep them. Charles John, what happened to you? I let you become a monster. Able to dismiss the worst of crimes with a shrug. John, please understand this, Charles. For years I was an object of curiosity. I had even had offers to appear in sight shows. Now the tables are turned, I can walk among men. Unseen and invisible, it gives me power. It isn't very sweet to me. I haven't decided yet how I shall use it. But in any case, I won't have you interfering. You know, is that clear, Charles? Charles, with that, John retired to the laboratory. I remained there alone the rest of the day. It wasn't until after dark that he emerged to find me staring with horror at the evening paper. John, well, Charles, what does the paper say that made you look so pale? Charles drained. I'm pleased found out your fingerprints on the knife. I killed Harry Watson. John, what? Let me see it. Charles here. John, yes. Please investigate the murder last night of Harry Watson. Like when you were the local George's son. Say they're trying to trace that down fingerprints found on the paper knife used in the, as a death rubber. I will submit they have discovered further evidence which may hope I lead bring about an early arrest. Charles, they might be here any minute. John, no nonsense, even if I did leave a print. How can they trace it to me? Talk of an early arrest. It's just a bluff, and besides, I can do all. Charles, that must may be the police now. If, if it is, what do should we, we do? John, oh, it can't be. But if it is, let them in. Uh, let me do the talking, Charles. Oh, all right. Charles, yes, what is it? Inspector, Mr. Charles Otterway? Charles, yes, I'm Charles Otterway. Better, I'm Inspector Long of the Homicide Squad. I do ask you some questions if you don't mind. Charles, oh, I don't. No, oh, not at all. No, no, come in. Inspector steps in, door closes. Charles, we can talk it. We can talk in the living room. John, what is it? Charles. John, oh, John, this is Inspector John Long. He says he wants to ask me some questions. Oh, really? What's in the world about? Charles, I don't know. Press for the inspector. I, don't, I can't imagine why. But I want to ask you what you can tell me about the death of Wire Watson. John L. Watson, Durer? One who we read about in the paper? Better than that's the one. If ever was seen leaving the storage door a few minutes before Watson's body was found, someone recognised him. John, why that's, why that's true. The inspector Charles dropped in last night by a watch for me. They didn't find quite what I wanted. Better rather hear that. Hear him tell it. Charles, well, that's all there is to it. I looked at the watches and left. Watson was all right there when I left. The better I see. There was no one else in the store. Charles, no one I could see. I'm sorry, I can't see you anymore. Inspector, sorry too, but just for the sake of helping us, would you be willing to let me take your fingerprints? John, well, of course, you don't mind, Charles. You're thinking the print, thinking the prints, the paper says they found in a death weapon, aren't you? Oh, in a death weapon, aren't you, Inspector? Uh, frankly, yes. John, well, they aren't, Charles, I can assure you. But it was just a check. Here, Miss Aubrey, if you just press your fingerprints against this gate and plate, I have it in the, I have it set the envelope. Charles, like this? That's right. Thank you. John, you wouldn't want mine too, I suppose. Very well, if you'd like to add yours to your brother's. John laughs. Oh, I was, I was just joking. By the way, Inspector, how do you go about t- tracing down unknown fingerprints such as those of this killer? John, well... Spider, well, this is one one way. Uh, excuse me, 
Open cigarette box. Case cigarette. John sets case thinking. Better. They light up. They ask how we. You ask how we check fingerprints. Well, there are several methods. FBI records, Army and Navy records, and the ones secure source few we all know about. John, what's that? Back to hospital birth records for a number of years now. Recorded the footprints and fingerprints of every baby born in the city. City in the morning, they start checking those peak records as far back as they go. John, well, that's very interesting. But, oh, sorry, Inspector. They couldn't be more helpful. Better shrugs. It's all in the game. Good night, gentlemen. Charles, good night, Inspector. Inspector, moving off. Don't bother me to show me out. Front door opens and closes. John, low, intense. Did you hear that? They're going to start checking fingerprints on the hospital birth records. And our prints are among the first ever to be recorded. His town, father, sister, isn't it? Charles, perhaps they overlook yours. John, I can't risk it. But I'll, I'll, I will stop them. I'll stop them somehow. Charles, but not explaining, he hurried into the laboratory. Two minutes later, he emerged just to go out. His hat pulled down over his face. Face and his and his face. John, what is it? What are you doing? Oh, what are you googling at me? Charles, your face. I can't see it. Your hand either. John, of course not. I took an obje- injection of transparent serum. Now I'm getting going to drive downtown, Charles, with this coat and hat on. I look like an ordinary driver to anyone who sees his car. I get where I'm going. I'll take off these garments and leave them in the car. Then go, and then no one on earth will be able to see me. Child, but where are you going? Front door opens. John to the police headquarters. Child, with that, John left. I heard him drive off. And then I could do nothing but wait. The hours crawled slowly past. I grew more and more nervous. Clock was striking eleven. I heard John key in the door at last. Clock strikes eleven. Front door unlocks and opens. Charles. John, is that you? John, yes, Charles. Come here, I need you. Charles, what is it? What happened? Front door closes. John, it's my ankle. I think it's broken. Charles, they're here. Lean on me, I'll, I'll help you into the living room. John, ah, oh, yeah, ah, oh, groans. Careful. They stumble to the living room. Charles, why, John? Your coat's all bloody. John, yes, they shot at me. Nick, my side. It's not serious, Charles. Here, here, let me sit down. John sits at his elbow. Charles, shall I call a doctor? John, no, no. We tend to the bullet scratch and the ankle ourselves. It's an easel for a price of fay. She's in as I expect along is dead. Charles, dead? John, yes, I fell. He fell from the window of his office on sixth floor. Police headquarters. Well, I'm apparently quite alone in the room. Charles, then you killed him too? John, of course I did. I did it, I had to, luckily, had the paper knife there in his hand, office. I was able to wipe all my prints off it. I found the photographs of the pranks in his desk, too. I tore them those up and burned them. Charles, how did you get hurt? John, I tried to slip out of the building again during the confusion. Thought it was Long's accident. I reached the first floor when a clumsy copper bumped into me in a dark hall. He yelled and grabbed at me. I had a duck through a window door and struck the locket. I got the bullet up, window up, and went clambering out. They fired at the door. The bullet nicked me. I lost my balance when I picked myself off the ground. My ankle's broken. I hovered to the car somehow. Well, here I am, Charles. Upset, John. What are, you going, what are we going to do, John? Just sit tight. That's all the evidence is destroyed. I expect the law is gone. We're perfectly safe. Child, but suppose there are some other clues. John, nonsense. You're taking care of everything. You hear? Charles. John. John, what is it, Charles? Charles, a car just stopped in front of the car house. John, car? See who it is. Charles, moving off. Yes. It's a police car. John, oh, they, they, we got right fast. They mustn't. Find me like this. Charles, what can you do? John, we move clothes for the effort. First, I'll get them, get these clothes off. I mustn't, 
I haven't time to take my neutralizer serum now. I'll give them. I'm going. Just have going to have to hide. Be weaker. They'll find not find me if they can't see me. First weekly, Charles. Oh, John, you're ill. John, I feel weak. The loss of blood. It's father's nothing serious. Charles, but I may faint if I do. Charles, yes, John. John, hide my clothes. In the kitchen, my hamper. Charles, yes. John, then carry down to the cellar. Put me in the empty story room, storage room. Charles, right. John, lay me on its sofa there. If you look, they look in. They see it's empty. It won't go stummy around. Do you hear me? Charles, yes, yes, I hear you, but John. John, I. He faints. Charles, he fainted in my arms. I had no time to think swiftly. I, I did as he instructed. I carried him down the small storage room uh, in the cellar, placed him on the small, some excelsior in a corner, and hurried back upstairs. I had already the police were pounding on the lodge door. Pounding on the door. Charles. I jammed John's body clothes into the kitchen hamper. Then I hurried it to the door. Charles, yes, what, what is it? Captain, police, Miss Aldway, are coming to... Bill, Joe, come on. Officer, yes, Captain. Captain, to the offer, officers, the rest of you watch the house. You see that no one leaves. Front door closes. Charles, what is the meaning of this? I have the demonic explanation. And Captain, you'll get it. Now, where can we talk in here? Good, all right. Please sit down, it's all the way. Charles, it sells as he sits. Char- Captain, I'm ca- Captain, I'm ca- Detective Captain Bilbin. My chief inspector Long was here earlier. Charles, yes, I know. I answered all these questions then. Captain, well, I am asking the more questions. Long's dead. <clears throat> Charles feigned surprise. Look, Charles Inspector Long dead. Oh, even so, why? Captain interrupts. Listen, all the way. Long smelled a rat. He sat up someplace. And early tonight, when he got your fingerprints, he also got your brother's. Charles, but he didn't. Captain, he got them on his cigarette case. When your brother took a cigarette, it's an old trick. Have you died tonight? He found a case in his pocket. Carefully wrapped. Charles, well, what of it? Killing in some very serious way all the pictures of murder prints. We took off the paper knife of what killed Watson. Have vanished. But he had the negatives. We made new prints and discovered they checked with your brother's prints in the long cigarette case. All the way your brother's killed Harry Watson last night. Charles, but that's completely ridiculous, Charles, is it? Okay, we see. Where's your brother now? Charles. Unconvincingly, well, he's not here. He went away on a trip. Captain hiding her to office. Will Joe, officer? Yes, Captain. That's attacking officer. Yeah. Captain, search the house from cellar to attic, and don't miss a thing, officer. Right, we are, Captain. Come on, Joe. Charles. Half an hour later, I knew that further concealment was possible. Police had not found John. But he had found the dead same clothes he wished to guard. The discarded in my office desk. He found the diamonds which John had stolen. I knew I must tell the truth. Can we all go away? Are you to talk yet? Charles, yes, I'm ready to talk, Captain. Rather did kill Watson. Captain, oh, where is he now? Charles, he's hiding down his cellar. Can you cap- go off the Captain? There's some malarkey. He would look to the cellar. He isn't there. Charles, of course he didn't see him. He's invisible. Captain, he's, he's what? Charles, he's invisible, I said. Captain, you say your brother is invisible. Charles, yes, that's why you, they couldn't see him. Captain, on the way, you know what I think? I think you killed your brother in his quarrel over these diamonds and hurried, buried his body in the bar of some place. That's how these clothes of his got bloody, isn't it? Come on, admit it. Charles, no, my brother was wounded by a bullet after he killed him. Fed along, as to how his clothes got bloody. Captain's sceptical. Yeah, I suppose he's invisible when he killed Long. So that's why nobody saw him, huh? Charles, yes, I don't know who's saying. He's discovered head of the end of his body and tissues. He's transparent. He's hiding down the sun now, invisible. 
officer to the captain whose nut is a fruit cake. Captain shut up, Bill. Sir Charles Elderly. Way your brother's down in cellar now, huh? Charles, yes, he is. He fainted. I carried him down there. Captain, and when which room is he in? Charles, a little storeroom in the foot of the stairs. One with the metal door. Captain of officers, how about it, boys? Did you look there? I was sure we did, Captain. We looked right in there twice. Was a thing in that room by a little excavator. Second officer, right. We looked both both looked. The room is in an empty with a busted piggy bank. Captain, there you see, Miss Alderway. He'd been there. My men would have found him. Charles, but he's there. They don't see him because he took the serum. He made himself visible. Okay, all right, all right. It's all right. Just calm yourself. Now listen, my man. Says, my men say the room is empty. I say, yeah, except maybe for rats. We heard a couple stirring in the escalator. So we bolted to the door. We looked it in. Because we might as well keep the rats inside, Charles. You bolted the door? No, you mustn't. Captain, we've got to get John out. He mustn't. We won't. He's not. If he's not allowed to die. Officer Low amused, I'll get plenty of wax, but this is the new one. Second officer, well, oh, yep, he's got it bad. Captain Lordway, I'm afraid you have to come with us. Now you come quietly, or will you? Have to put the handcuffs on you, Charles. Hysterical. Now you can't take me. Have to get John out of that room. If he don't get an injection of his neutralizing serum inside twenty four hours, he'll die. During the following strange noises, scuffle, police murmur, and George Charles. Can you sorry, Mister All the Way? But Tough says, "Come on, boys, give me a hand. Not got to get him into psychiatric ward fast." <coughs> Charles. Stop, stop, no, you're not, you've got to believe me. You've got to let me go of me. No, no, no. Charles and there's that's the whole story, Doctor. I won't believe this. They brought me here to the hospital, charged with Jones' murder. Then I kept trying to tell them. And when I kept trying to tell them that he's alive, they gave me a narcotic. That he's alive, he's locked in that room, in that room in cellar. He isn't let out soon, he'll die. Twenty-four hours is the limit. There's still time to get to him. Dr. I yes, I understand, Mr. Wayne. I'll see to it when he's released at once. Charles, you mean it, Doctor? You believe me, Charles? Of course. Yes, of course. Of course. And, uh, attendant? Room door opens. Attendant, you call me, Doctor. Dr. Uh, yes, uh, go get your car ready, will you? We're going to Mr. Wayne's home. Once to release my brother. Attendant, yes, sir. Run away, Mr. Dr. Harvey. Charles, relieved. I think heaven you believe me, Doctor. Be in time to save John. To find the serum we need to bring him back to normal. Green bottle in the laboratory. Doctor, reassuring. Oh, I'll take care of him. Now you get back to sleep now, Mr. Wickleboy. Charles, weary dozing off. Yes, I will. You can sleep now. I can sleep. Click of light switch. Drone door closes. Lieutenant. How's he now, Doctor? Don't know. Oh, he's quiet now. It'd be all right. Lieutenant, you know, Doctor, sometimes you can't. Stop thinking. Doctor, yes, Dotson. I tell you, no, he locked up there. Here in a state prison hospital for bumping off his brother. Eventually they found, eventually they found his brother. A dead body locked in the little room in the cellar. I can't help wondering what the cops have found, would have found if anybody had taken Mr. Always serious. A night he brought here ten years ago. This is a mysterious traveller. So John could not make himself visible, could uh, could uh, around for long, and could be. Uh, uh, Trevor, Miss Trevor, this is mysterious Trevor. So John could make himself invisible, could he? Well, unfortunately, he did too good a job of it. Far hasn't been seen around for a long, long time. That's the trouble with having a man with unusual powers. Sometimes it. They get you into uh, a usual surfaces, a speech and difficulties. Oh, you have to get off here? I'm sorry. I'm sure we met meet again. I'll take this same train every week at the same time.